Rich Russell and Dave Brown right along ringside. We are just about ready to go with more of that big championship wrestling action. Good 1988 getting ready to go here, David. Got a good one coming in here. We got big Scott Hall in for uh, the match today to yep. get things going. He's out of Orlando, Florida, 287 pounds. He's a big guy. I think most folks around know him now. He will be here. A little bit later on, we got uh, nightmare number one, Ken Wayne coming in. We've got Hector Guerrero and Lux. <laughs> We've also got some information about some very exciting news wrestling-wise that will be coming up. And in case you didn't notice right down here in front of us, I don't know how you could help but notice it. We'll uh, be telling you about the uh, Renegade Rampage. It'll be coming up. It's a very, very exciting thing that'll be taking place over the next series of months. And it should be of interest. We'll take time out now. I've got a lot to go, so let's get on with it. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> match in here big Scott Hall will be uh, making his appearance and you sure as Sam Hill can't miss him can you Davey Boy, that's true he's huge as he climbs into the ring right now he's he will be going against uh, the Blue Knight the Blue Knight in at about uh, 234 pounds from parts unknown Scott Hall out of Orlando Florida he weighs 287 pounds one fall 10 minute time limit match Jerry Calhoun says let's go yeah, was, uh, and that 287 is distributed over about a six foot six inch frame. He is very, very strong. What a physical specimen. Blue Knight will have not just his work cut out, it'll he's better have his escape route planned. Yeah, that's already. a good idea. Uh, Mark see, the exits. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to uh, pick Scott Hall up, no success. Scott reversed it just recently and just very easily picked him up and slammed him down. Scott Hall and the Blue Knight as we open up championship wrestling today. Blue Knight pounding with a forearm on the big guy in the corner. Not much success. Oh, boy. Let me tell you, he stunned him, draped him over the rope, whip across the ring. Big drop kick from the big guy. Down goes the Blue Knight. Scott picks him back up and whips him in again. Look at this. Oh, power, huh? I mean power. Took him coming right off the ropes. Just lifted him up, slammed him down, drops with a big elbow on him, and Scott Hall picks him up again. He did not go for the pin at that particular point. Pounds in with a big forearm. Gonna bulldog him, and he did in good fashion. That should be it. Yep, Scott rolls him over for the pin. One, two, three, he got it. Took him a minute, 28 seconds, and that's all, all for big Scott Hall as the Blue Knight just couldn't get it going against him today. No major surprises in that match as Scott Hall came through with the victory in there. And if the Blue Knight gathers himself, gather yourself a little closer because I want to introduce a, an element here that I think is going to be very exciting over the next months to come. We're talking about renegade rampage 88 and you see right down here in front of us we've got a, a simulated check that uh, i want you to note if i can tell you about it on the uh, amount filled in over on the side two hundred and fifty thousand dollars major league bucks my friend for major league action that's going to be taking place Let's go to a press conference that has to do with the announcement about the Renegade Rampage right now and Jerry Jarrett. First, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for coming. Uh, we told you there would be a big announcement and it's the biggest announcement that's ever taken place for Jarrett Promotions. We're very pleased to tell you that starting in January, we will be the producers of the Renegade Rampage, the biggest wrestling promotion that's ever taken place with our company. The Renegades Rampage is a, is a series of wrestling events, 30 in all. Uh, each event, the participants will be trying to accumulate points. These points will accumulate up and the four top place point holders, the people that have accumulated the top points, will all meet for the finals of the Renegade Rampage in Memphis, Tennessee. That event will take place in June and the winner will receive a check for $250,000.
Uh, Eddie, I, I'm very excited. I know you are. Uh, before we go on, what I'd like to do is bring John Kennedy, Kenny, I'm sorry, our representative from Renegades here. And uh, Paul, if you would help uh, bring the check in. John is the money man with Renegades that's putting up this money. John, let me get around here and, and uh, introduce you to the people. Sure good to see you. And I just want to tell you that, that we're very, very proud. Let's let them get the check in. John, I know that Renegades is used to all this, but that's the first time I've ever seen a check for $250,000. Well, Jerry, we're awfully excited about being part of the Renegades Rampage. It's certainly a big step for us as far as promotion of our product. And uh, it's one of the many special events we do, but we're very excited about this program for 1988. John, we, uh, I can't tell you enough. I've, I've told you and Tommy and everybody that's affiliated with Renegades that, that we're so very proud that you've selected our company. Um, I've run over this pretty quick and I'm, I'm sure there's some questions out there from some of the, some of the people. Uh, if we can move out of the way so we can take their, take their questions. Um, does it, have we explained it full enough? Uh, here, if we can pass him a microphone, excuse me. Uh, Jerry, you said that the uh, four finalists in the Renegades Rampage uh, would be determined on the basis of points. Now, could you just explain how that point system is going to work? Uh, yes, I, I ran over that briefly. At each event, there will be 30 of them. Uh, Eddie Marlin will book the talent at random and there will be a rotation system so that, that people will try to be matched as near we can ascertain their skill level so that everybody will have a chance to be in the finals. There will be 10 points for a win. There will be five points for a win by disqualification. And there will be two points for a draw. Now the draw encompasses matches that are stopped, double disqualification. So if you avoid getting beat in the match, you get two points. If, you, if your opponent gets disqualified, you get five. We felt like that a win should signify 10 points. Uh, what this is going to do is going to make a loss very important in the tournament because our goal not only is to have a big event on the finals, but so that every match is important. And by giving 10 points to the winner, every match at the 30 events and these events will take place in all of the major venues, Memphis, Nashville, Louisville, Evansville, Jackson. But there will also be a number of events at the smaller venues. And the, every, all of our fans in the Mid-South will be able to really get the feel and see the results of what Renegades is doing for us in that a 10-point win as opposed to a no-point loss, real quick, two or three events, and a person can be out of the running. So I think this is going to bring out the very best uh, from all of our wrestlers. Thank you for your question. Yes, if you could pass him the microphone. I had a question for John of Renegades. John, how did uh, Renegades choose Gar uh, the uh, Jarrett Promotions versus, say, the WWF or the group out of Atlanta? Well, uh, we spent a lot of time in research to try to find the best group to, to serve our potential consumer and also uh, our current product users. We found that uh, the areas which Jarrett Promotions were strong would suit our needs and uh, we're very excited about being involved with them. Um, the amount of money we're putting up is very significant and we know that that's important in terms of bringing out the competition and then to also provide uh, us with the potential promotion of our product um, through the wrestling, and we're very excited about it. Thank you. Jerry, we realize that Jarrett Productions has uh, a lot of top-notch talent on board already. Uh, my question is, will the Renegade Rampage be limited to wrestlers that you currently have under contract with your company? Well, no, it's not limited, but if I can get over here with the microphone, Eddie is the man with our company, as all of our fans know, that, 
that is involved in the actual booking and, and the contacting wrestlers, and I think you can better answer that question. That's right. In answering this question, we know we have top talent here, but we've had top talent from all over the country to call us. Some of the names of people more familiar with, Handsome Jimmy Valiant, Coco, uh, where he's called in, and we're getting calls every day, and we're expecting more and more calls. It'll be a really top event. Yes, and, and to further that, I don't know the specifics of, of the talent, but I do know that it was, it was part of our arrangement with the Renegades that this be an open tournament, open to uh, wrestlers from any organization that were willing to come in and, and be in the, the 30 preliminary events and qualify for the finals. Uh, are there any other questions? Yes, well, there, there's the microphone right there. This question is directed towards John also. Can you tell me if Renegades is planning any other promotions aside from the wrestling promotion this year? Well, um, in 1988, we currently do a lot of uh, promotions in the special events area. We'll do approximately 700 event dates throughout the 98 season. Uh, encompassing all these events, um, within a calendar year is very important, it takes a lot of uh, work by our people and we want to do as much good for the fans as we do for the wrestlers. So we've uh, developed a, a program um, with a lot of items that we'll have as giveaways that Jerry's going to show you right now um, to the fans. The t-shirts. And also uh, some hats and things like that. It's important for us to, to make sure that uh, not only the wrestlers are taken care of, but the fans are awful important to us, too, to get the exposure for our product that we need to have. And um, we know the corporate sponsorship in the wrestling area uh, is very important to Jerry, and, and we know that it's going to go a long way for us, too. Thank you. Are there any, any other questions? Well, again, I certainly appreciate you being here. Uh, we're looking forward to the Renegade Rampage. The first events will start in January, and to the people in our television audience, uh, our local weekly wrestling shows will give you all the details, when the events take place, uh, who the exact participants will be. Uh, we're very excited about it, and we think you will be too. Thank you very much. see him a dandy night of action seven matches will be on the card boy i'll tell you what that's getting 88 underway in mighty mighty good fashion you'll be seeing bill dundee and jerry lawler with that big beautiful lord of the ring ring of jerry lawler's up against five thousand dollars of dundee that's going to be a scrap and a half hey you want to see something lumberjack strap match when Hector Guerrero goes in against Jeff Jarrett with a ring surrounded by gentlemen with straps in their hand to keep you in the ring. Evansville, wake up! Come and see what's going to happen to your hero, Jeff Jarrett. Girls will be creaming, oh, Jeff, maybe they're pulling their little hairs out because I'll be kicking your butt, Jeff Jarrett. And not only that, I'll be throwing you out of the ring because I don't like you. I don't like chicken skins, and I don't like Americans who go around boasting that they think they're better than anybody else in this world. That's why I'm here. I'm Mexico's Avenging Angel, and strapping in your back, you're going to be called a strap back. You're hearing it from Hector Guerrero. That's the one where the guys will have straps. Anybody that goes out, either one of them will get strapped until they do get back in that ring. Also, that big match between Lawler and Dundee with the ring against $5,000. Just two of the great seven matches on the card Wednesday night at the Evansville Coliseum. We'll be giving you the entire card coming up in just a few moments. But I'll tell you, the two matches we've mentioned, worth the price of admission, regular prices, Wednesday night, the Coliseum. Okay, the bell will ring on. Boy, I'll tell you what, there's some exciting news about the Renegade Rampage You're 88. Right. And, you know, I, I know that you can't appreciate the full significance of it, but... We are uh, looking forward very much to that uh, during 1988. Should be a whale of an addition to the attraction. Okay, Dave, I think we're ready for our next bout. Okay. All right, stepping into the ring right now, nightmare number one, Ken Wayne, and his opponent from Memphis, Tennessee, 214 pounds, Keith Eric. And on the other side of the ring, at 216, also out of Memphis, Tennessee, it is nightmare number one, Ken Wayne. This match will be one fall, 10 minute time limit. In Keith Eric's corner, Nathaniel Whitlock, Nate the Rat. Well, sounds we're underway with the action. Ken Wayne says, hey, you want to shake hands? <laughs> Nate the Great, he says, yeah. Uh-huh. Keep your eye on him during the match, huh? 
Keith Eric round behind. Nightmare reverses it, takes his legs away from it, down to the mat he goes. Again, had the shoulders down, couldn't hold it for a three count. Oh, Eric on his feet, yelling about having his hair full. Classic move up behind into a hammer, and Keith Eric makes a good move to step over the rope, and that calls for a break. Break we got. One of the trademarks of the nightmare is uh, the quick moves. You'll see Ken moving. Look at it. React. Counter. Cover. One. Two. He got a two count, but couldn't make it stick for three. No sooner said than done. Boy, he whipped it around, got that hip toss on him, and came right on out of it. Off the ropes. Ken ducks under. Oh, look at, look at that. this. Hooks those arms down to the mat. Both shoulders are down. Left shoulder came up off the mat. Yep. Keith Eric trying to roll out of it, and he did, and he's down right now. Talking to Nate the Great, he says he is. Yeah. Nate the Great. Nate the Great. Forget that Nate the Rat stuff. Mm -hmm. The Nightmare, number one, Ken Wayne in Danny Davis. Still partner from time to time. Quite a tag team indeed. Look at Eric. Moves in, going to work on Ken Wayne. Head butts him. Lefts and rights to the midsection. Whip into the corner. And Eric buries a shoulder into the midsection. Snaps Ken out of it in the center of the ring. And look at Keith. Oh, what a dandy of a reversal there, huh? Looked like Keith Eric really had something going there for a minute. Whatever uh, Nate said to him when he was out here had an effect. But now Ken Wayne comes back. He takes over the tempo of the match. Keith Eric reverses him into the rope. Ken Wayne round behind. Down he goes. Shoulders are down. Counts two. This time he gets him with a three count. Ah. What, what a, a big bridge. bridge. Yeah. yeah, he used that bridge and used his own weight and part of Eric's weight to hold the shoulders down to the mat. Got the three count. And in two minutes, 27 seconds, nightmare number one, Ken Wayne gets the victory. Ken Wayne with a very spectacular show in there against uh, Keith Eric. As, uh, he turned him every way but loose and made some beautiful conversions in there. Ken coming up with the victory as we're out here with Shawn Michaels and Mark Goulin. Uh, first of all, I want to say my partner and I over the holidays made a little bit of agreement and we don't feel like most of the places we go here with the CWA deserve to see both of the Midnight Rockers, wow. especially at the prices these people are playing. This is outrageous. So let's jack them prices up a little, then you might be able to get both Midnight Rockers out here. And second of all, who is this pipsqueak in the ring thinking that he's a, he's a would-be Midnight Rocker fan out looked there? looked pretty good, didn't he? <laughs> no, he didn't look good at all. He you looked like, like... You like cheap imitations? He's wonderful. <laughs> I know, he looked like a geek, for God's sake. I mean, <laughs> he comes out here, he's jumping around the ring, and it looks like... Wait, I guess you'll want, you're going to want an autograph or something because you look like you're trying to be Shawn Michaels out there. And I, hey, I want you to, first of all, I want to tell you, I mean, I, thanks for the compliment because you're obviously a big fan of mine and my style, but I don't want you coming out here and, you know, real thing because it takes a lot of time. No, no, I understand. It takes a lot of time, though, to get the skills that my partner and myself have, 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 you know, have accomplished for ourselves. Yeah, and I say you're still looking for time, pal. Let me tell you something. I haven't copied you. In fact, when Ken Wayne and Danny Davis got together as a nightmares, the Midnight Rockers didn't even own a pair of boots, brother. So if anybody's trying to copy anybody, it's the Midnight Rockers trying to copy Ken Wayne and what Danny Davis did for eight years, brother. Well, let me tell you something. I've never... You little runt, first of all, you don't come out here and start talking How to me you like that. Slapped by a I have been one half of the world tag team champions. Something which the Nightmares would know nothing about. That's I'm right. And you know why? Because we went all over the country looking for you and your partner, and you cheap jerks wouldn't sign a contract because you were running from us. Oh, all, all, way. all over the our country, baby, don't tell me. If you know what, anything I would have known about. Hey, that's, that's not, not what it was. You you that's not what it was. Our bookings, our bookings were full throughout the whole year. We had obligations. 
That's why we couldn't wrestle you guys. You think that my partner and I are afraid of you? We're the hottest tag team of professional wrestling, pal. Yeah, you stood out here and said that we tried to copy you. Well, let me ask you a question, Shawn Michaels. How many videotapes did you watch of me and Danny Davis to learn what you know? <laughs> well, let's Now, wait a minute. Game. Wait a minute. I... No. No. I... 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 <laughs> There's yeah, that, I, not, not, no, 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 shut up, Clay, shut up, no, shut up. You didn't no, go to school to learn how to no, do it. No, wait, no, I remember briefly that there were, a, uh, there were some matches that the Nightmares were in that w we saw, but they had, they had no bearing. No, yeah, you were hey. conveniently, conveniently ill that night. You couldn't be there, you chicken. Oh, uh, that's not, that's not it at all, Lance Russell. You know very well that I'm a, let me tell you something, you're, you look, what are you going to be when you grow up? That's what I want to know, pal. You okay, come out here and baby. talk to me like that. I'm going to be the I'm one that put your butt. I'm a champion. I'm six okay, foot one, oh, 230 pounds. That's six foot one. Ooh, you we got to take a break here, fellas. Hey, no, 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 the no, no, largest no, no, midget no, wrestler no, in the world. I'm going to get that. 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 Sixty quick seconds, my friend, to tell you all about the action coming down to the Coliseum Wednesday night when Championship Wrestling pays its visit. I'll tell you, seven matches with regular prices. You want to be there. Start the year out with some big excitement. T. Joe Khan going against Don Bruce. Billy Travis will be facing Jimmy Jack Funk. Manny Fernandez going against Ron Bruce. There will be a CWA ladies title when Lady Satan will be going against uh, Debbie Combs for the title. Then a Southern tag team title match with the Midnight Rockers facing Big Scott Hall and his partner, the Nightmare, Ken Wayne. Lumberjack strap match. Oh, what a dandy this is going to be after all the problems they've had. Hector Guerrero, Jeff Jarrett in the ring and surrounded by guys with straps in their hands so that when anybody goes out, they'll be hammered back into the ring. And the final event, Dundee and Lawler with Lawler's $10,000 ring up against uh, Dundee's $5,000 Wednesday. Okay, we're about ready to go with our next match. We've asked Ken Wayne to uh, stay right here with us. Ken, if you would, just stay here, and we'll watch the rocker Shawn Michaels match here. Yeah, he's talking about how good he is. Let's see how many moves he uses that Danny and I have used before. Okay, but we'll, uh, we'll be looking for him uh, back in here, and here he comes right now. And I must say that Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty, the Midnight Rockers, under the new management uh, and business counseling of Mark Gulleen, they are the Southern Tag Team Champions, so there's no question about it. Okay, Davey, how about an introduction now? All right, introducing from Arkansas at 193 pounds, David Wilson, and going against him from San Antonio, Texas, at 234 pounds, Shawn Michaels, half the Midnight Rockers team. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Okay, and they tie it up. Uh, Wilson and Shawn Michaels. Over on the rope, uh, nice clean break, and you got to give him credit there, don't you? Yeah, he uh, he was giving himself credit, so yeah. why not everybody else? Uh, if Michael, he won't, he figured he would. Yeah, he comes away from the ropes, clapping for himself for a clean break. They uh, kind of let the money of Mark Gulleen uh, get into their eyes and uh, has given them... Oh, oh, good yeah. elbow. Oh, ball, ball. You know, I've never taken nothing away from the Rockers and their, and their wrestling abilities or else they wouldn't have been world champions for, for quite a while. So, I mean, he comes out here and wants to run his mouth. Well, I understand he's got a real bad attitude problem. Well, that is something that is becoming more apparent all the time. Jams that shoulder into the knee. Drops Wilson down. Count of one, but he doesn't pin him at that point. Shawn Michaels uh, having it all his way as he drills with that right hand. Climbs up on the rope. Getting himself good position, pops another right hand. Look at this. He is all the way up on that top rope. And oh, beautiful move. Uh, 
And followed it up nicely, too, man. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. He does that backward flip right off that top rope. Came down, went back in, and drilled him with the right hand. Not illegal, but uh, it got the job done. You know, he wants to sit there and say, let's see one of the nightmares do that. You know, if I remember correctly, I was doing that seven, eight years ago before these boys ever ever got in the ring, I believe. Uh, we saw it all right here. There's no doubt about it when the nightmares got underway. Up on the shoulder, and he takes him down to complete the suplexes. Shawn Michaels uh, having an easy time with Wilson. Wilson kicks out and saves himself for another few minutes at least as Michaels obviously is the very big favorite in this match. Oh. Chopping away hard. Midnight rocker Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty, Southern Tag Champs and he drilled him with that elbow. Well, you know, Lancer, I'm not taking nothing away from these guys, but, you know, I'd like to get hold of Danny or find me another partner, and we'll just see how, how handily he takes care of somebody that's got some experience behind him. Yeah, they uh, are very free and easy when it comes to running uh, down. Uh, Ken Wayne off the top rope. He flies with the elbow, leisurely lays back one, two, three. And that is going to be it. As uh, Shawn Michaels comes through two minutes and 32 seconds, a uh, relatively easy win. Uh, yeah, easy, easy. They're all easy when you're talking about the Midnight Rock. See, let me tell you something back there, Small Fry. That's professional wrestling Midnight Rocker style. And see, someday, if you work hard enough, you get in the gym a little bit, get some of, your, get some of those... Those platform shoes to get yourself a little taller. Then maybe, and you work really hard, maybe then you can almost be a Midnight Rocker too. Well, let me tell you okay. something. The last thing I want to be is a Midnight Rocker. That's, That's the, the last thing. You'd ever be hey, afforded you, the opportunity you to keep your nose today. out of it, this man. Is my no, it's not. Absolutely. Here's the one I hear running his mouth. You will put on your tights, you get your butt in the ring, too. Idiot. I'll take care of you. Like I'll you. take care of you. Anybody else. You don't know how you going like to How you going to feel? I'll knock you out. Oh, you go for any you want to, baby. What? Scott Hall. Scott Hall. Scott Hall. Scott Hall. Scott Hall. You know, I was back in the back, and I couldn't help but over here, a guy used to be a good friend of mine out here, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty, the new Midnight Rockers. Yeah. You know, nobody ever doubted that these guys are talented wrestlers, certainly, certainly not myself. They've been the AWA World Tag Team Champions. See, now he knows now he's talking. Tell him. Tell him. But, you know, I don't know what happened. Uh, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty seem to be a little bit cocky now. I hear you out here running down Kenny Wayne two-on-one. You guys are real tough. Well, brother, I've, we've been talking about it before. Yeah. If you're looking for a partner, you don't have to look far. Oh, oh yeah. That's right, man. Come so on. This guy. You and your partner. Scott Hall making his presence not only known but felt. As Marty, uh, or rather, as Shawn Michaels is backing up and Mark Gouleen probably doing the best thing that he can do. Now, no, I don't think you want to step in with these two right now. Hey, in the ring. In the ring. Hey, in the ring. Let me tell you something. You're so big and you're so bad and you're so tough. Well, I got big, bag and tough right here on my side. Put those belts on the line, baby, and we'll walk out with them. Yeah, you see it, Shawn Michaels, Mark Gouleen. The best thing you guys can do is just, just move. Scott and uh, Ken Wayne, a good pairing right here. Thank you guys for coming out. We got to take time out. We'll see more of them right now. We'll be back in a moment. Uh, most of you people uh, are at least in all the areas other than the Memphis, Tennessee area didn't have an opportunity to see this and participate, so we're going to bring you some highlights. This is what it was all about. What you're looking at is six carats of diamonds and rubies in a custom-made ring for the Lord of the Ring tournament. Uh, the promotion uh, commissioned Peril Jewelers, which is a chain of jewelry stores, to do this beautiful, beautiful ring. It is valued at 10000 bucks or more, 
and uh, that was the prize for the ultimate. Now, it took in a lot of territory. Scott Hall came out of the Florida elimination, for instance. Uh, Ken Wayne came out of the Alabama, and, and so on. Anyhow, there was a series of eliminations went down. Uh, finally, one fall, 30-minute eliminations until the final match, and the winner of it to receive that ring right there. We want to show you some highlights from the final night where we had the semifinals and the finals. In the semifinals, Bill Dundee and Jeff Jarrett, Jerry Lawler and Scott Hall, and then the finals took place with the winners of those two matches going against each other. Let's look at some of the highlights from the Mid-South Coliseum, Memphis, Tennessee, Lord of the Ring Tournament. Here they are. was a dandy. I'm just sorry that uh, everybody didn't get an opportunity to see it. But here he comes right now. We normally call him the king, but today uh, you've seen it. Let's call him the Lord of the Ring. Jerry, I got to congratulate you, partner. I'll tell you one thing. You've been in a jillion of them, but I, you told me that this was as tough as anything you ever earned. First, let me do this. Let me make the official presentation to you. 
There it is for the Lord of the Ring, the Lord of the Ring. There it's a $10,000 one. Can you slip it on there? Let's see. Oh, boy, look at that stuff. It's a little big, but uh, oh, yeah. uh, like Eddie Marlin told me back, back back there a while ago, he said, uh, tell everybody you can rent a trailer and take that to all the towns that you're going to wrestle. <laughs> so that, that may be what I have to do with this. But I want to thank, uh, thank you, Lance. And I, I also want to thank Ron Peril and all the people at Peril Jewelers for... Uh, uh, sponsoring this tournament and putting this ring together and everything and uh, beautiful sculpting not just engraving oh, on the side here all of the scene from the CWA logo and that sort of thing it is really super it's a beautiful ring and, and like you said Lance it was a it was a great tournament throughout especially the finals uh, I, I learned there in one night exactly what Scott Hall is all about now here's one individual who is uh, is gonna make a big name for himself in, in this profession I can guarantee you a lot of the fans are uh, Scott is new to the fans around this area and in that match uh, I've been against a lot of big guys a lot of strong guys and boy this Scott Hall is ranks right up there at the top of the list let me explain Jerry for those folks uh, who are not uh, in the Memphis area and weren't able to be there that in the match with uh, with you Scott used that pile drive in there because it is legal in Florida and it is not legal in the state of Tennessee so uh, it got him disqualified in the match. well it was it was a fortunate situation for me in the fact that uh, uh, that he wasn't ex really familiar with all the rules in this area and uh, because I w I'll, I'll be quite honest with you I was having an awful lot of trouble with Scott Hall by the same token uh, what didn't show on the tape there was in the match Jeff Jarrett had with Bill Dundee, Hector Guerrero, Hector Guerrero came out to the ring and held Jeff and, w and kept him from being able to get back in the ring, or that match would have kept going too, you know. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's really hard to figure out how, how it would have all come out had, had everything gone exactly right, but I'm just tickled with the way it did come out. I got to tell you, your, your problems didn't end when you got to the finals either because we've all been there before and we've seen them, and I got to tell you... That match with you and Billy was something else. What a tough son of a gun that was. Well, uh, I think he summed it up pretty well at the end when he said, uh, I was about the toughest guy he's ever wrestled, and, and uh, he's about the toughest guy I've ever wrestled. Billy, great That's match. You I, got it. I know you're disappointed. It was, it was just one of those nights. Well, that's all I got to say. Like I told you, I was going to do all the quit to win that ring, and I did it. Now, I think I did it anyway. And I've... I have never been obsessed with nothing all my life. Jerry has chased the world, and I've had titles, all kinds of titles, and, you know, you win a few, you lose a few. And he's always wanting to be the NWA or whatever world heavyweight champion, right? And it was an obsession with him. And I used to think, the man's crazy. Why is he beating his brains out trying to get that belt? Until I saw that ring. And I want it real bad. <laughs> I kind of And last that. week, I really thought I won it. I really did. Now, there's a piece of tape, and I know somebody has it because I've seen it. That hasn't been showed yet, and if the man upstairs would punch the button, We've got and it. Mr. Lawler watches it, and you watch it, and everybody out there watches it, I beat Jerry Lawler. Okay, let's watch it right here. Oh, big right hand. Dundee follows with another right. Look at him exchange those punches. Dundee pounding away. Lawler stays. the ring. Lawler slams right into poor Jerry Calhoun. Now watch the clock. Watch. The pin, but of course there's no referee. There. Three. Finish. Four. We're on overtime. Five. Six. Calhoun, you idiot. Get up. Seven. Eight. Nine. Look. He's he never tried the count. Jerry Calhoun. Now that's all I'm saying. Making no exaggerations. I'm just saying that. Yeah, let me ask you something, Bill. Now in other words, you're, try you're trying to say there that you had me pinned for what would have been a 10 count? Is that what you're trying to tell me? We just saw it. It was 10, right? We what? put the little clock and it was 10. Let me ask you this. There was no referee there to count, right? He was there. He was laying. He was sleeping or whatever. I don't know. Do you think that I didn't know that there was no referee there to count? Jerry. Why, Jerry. Should, I, why should I kick out when I'm taking a little 10-second rest? No, no, sir. Huh? You was out. If you were... You was out, you know it, and I know it. Because this right hand knocked you out, brother, and I picked your legs up, flipped on over, and you was out. And at the same yeah, when he... Let's talk for just a second about that little right hand right there. Who started throwing those right hands? We're going out there, Bill. You know, you and I were just the world tag team champions. We're partners, and all of a sudden, you st as soon as the match starts, you start throwing the fist left and right. What's, you know, now, I understand all that, but I told you right here that before the match, I told everybody I was going to do whatever, because I want that. 
Then I'm going to get it one way or the other. You did say you wanted that That's bad. That's right. And I didn't mind you punching me back and it hurt. Look at my head. It's all beat up too. And I went out there to fight you, to wrestle you, to do anything to get it. And I feel in my heart I won. It was there for 10. Calhoun, I don't know where he was. Well, he was knocked out. And at the same time... Oh, all I can say, Bill, is you might feel in your heart that you won, but you don't feel on your finger that you won, because this ring is on my finger. Oh, yeah, I understand that. But there's 365 days in a year, and there's 52 weeks in a year, and one of them days, we're, I'm going to get that. And it's too big for you, because I watched on the monitor, you have nubby little hands that don't fit, but it fits me. <laughs> now, I have another little problem. Well, you already know what the proposition is. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think you do know what the proposition is. It shows you how bad this guy wants that ring, Jerry. Well, you know, I, 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 can, I can understand that, and I can, uh, uh, I mean, who wouldn't want this? You know, it, it's not only for what it signifies, but the fact that it's a $10,000 uh, diamond, gold, and ruby ring, and, and anybody would want it. I understand that. But the fact of the matter is, Bill, uh, you know, you talk about my obsession with the world title. True, I've chased that title throughout my entire career. But this is something that I look upon as uh, signifying just as much as that title. So I want to hang on to this, you know. Wait a minute. Well, what have you got here, Bill? It's a check. I go, I'm making it. Do you want it at the cash or do you want it at the Jerry Lawler? Because you ain't going to cash it anyway because I'm winning that. How do you want it? Made it at the Jerry Lawler? Well, uh, I, I think there needs to be more explanation than that in the fact that the match, uh, Bill has insisted on a rematch uh, with that ring at stake, I know. Well, that's right. Uh, you know, Eddie, Eddie Marlin called me on Thursday and said that, uh, said that Bill had called him and wanted, just like you said, he wanted a rematch. I said, look, I don't even you want to be so excited. I wrote this hat too much. I'm tearing this one up. <laughs> that's okay. I, I, you know, I told Eddie, I said, I don't, I don't really want to match with Bill. Uh, you know, Bill and I have been partners. You both know why, too, brother. That show is right there on that tape. I beat you, Jerry, and down in your heart, you're going to know that. Well, let me just make a long story short. Eddie Marlin said Bill wanted a rematch, and he wanted it with the ring at stake. And I said, well, I'm not just going in there and putting my ring that I just won up at stake without Bill putting something up at stake. So I said, is the ring's worth $10,000? I said, let him put up $10,000. Hey, brother, if I was going to put up $10,000, I could go down to Peril Jewelers and ask him to make me one. That's not the point. I'm just being nice about this, so it gives you an incentive to beat me again because I don't think you can do it two weeks in a row and I don't think you did it last week now you'll get five thousand dollars if you beat me and if I beat you I'll get this ring plus my check back and we both had a good payday right no, I didn't. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. not if he loses that ten thousand dollar ring he never actually won it Lance How, we saw it right there I okay. feel in my okay this is what when you get when, when there's an, a sign you go a settle in the olden days, they picked up the glove and he slapped the guy's face and they took up the channels, right? This is all I'm doing in the modern style. I feel I won the ring. He feels he won the ring. Let's fight for it again. And that's what we're going to do because my nubby little hands is coming out left and right. So you better be throwing them when it starts, brother, because I want that. Well, it, it, Bill is, is agreeing and he's making out a check right now. And the figure that's going to be on the end of that is going to be $5,000. And it will be in there against this ring. So... You have a chance to pick up a lot of money, at least, in well, addition to the ring. Yeah. That's exactly right, Lance, and that's why I've agreed to this match. You know, I first told Eddie Marlin, I said, look, Eddie, uh, Bill and I have been partners, and uh, I would rather be friends with Bill than be against him in the ring. And then uh, when he told that to Bill, Bill came back with a comment of said, well, uh, we're the best partners in the world, but we're not the best friends in the world. So if that's the way he wants to be, that's fine with me. I'll gladly accept your challenge, Bill. Let me just say this, one thing. Just like you came out here and told everybody, and I thought, uh, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, I thought maybe that was just Bill doing some talking. You hold this in case he catches it before he wins. Just keep it right there. <laughs> okay, no, you won't have it. I'll give now, it to Now, I understand that you and I is one of the best tag teams around here. We are great. We've never said we went out and drank Coca-Cola every night together. We are just a business partner. And right now, there's nobody we want to beat up. Like, I just want to beat you up and win this ring. Now, we are a great tag team. It's business, my friend. All them football players that play ball, even for the Cleveland Browns, they don't all like one another, but when they play as a team, they're great. When we're a team, we you're great. You're a great wrestler. So am I. I just think I won that. By golly, it can't get any simpler than that. And the way to settle it is going to be in that ring. And the match is made. Well, that's right, Bill. But let me just tell you this week, I know where you're coming from, brother. You started out throwing the fist last week. This week, 
I'm going to start out the same way. And I'm going to tell you plain and simple, you've been out here running your mouth, you've been doing all your bragging, well it's time for me to just uh, do a little bragging myself. You couldn't beat me on your best day and you're going to find that out, brother, because I'm going to cash that $5,000 check and I'm going to wear this ring in that ring and I'm going to wear it out and hopefully I probably can dribble that check all the way to Nashville. But if it's any good, I'm going to cash it and I'm going to have myself $5,000 and a nice little party with this ring. Well, I'm just going to tell you something, Kingfish. This is going to be the damnedest fight you ever had in your life because if I go come right to your house and steal it, I'm going to do that because I want that. But that's not what's going to happen. I'm taking you out in the middle of the ring, brother, because I won that and your stinking friend wouldn't count and you know it. Calhoun wouldn't count. It was a count of ten and he never did it. But when I was down, no. you was out and your autumn fell on me when I guess wham, wham, wham. And I beat you and you know it. Got his, got his blood pressure up there, didn't he? All I can say, Lance, is we'll see this week who beats who. Well, Dundee may be right. It may be one of those kind of fights that you're going to see. we got to take time. I'll be back in a moment. Oh, boy. chance to remind you about the action Wednesday night. I do in fact hope you pay close attention because friend it is a dandy. Seven matches in all. It's going to be headlined by that Lawler Dundee scrap for the ring against Dundee's $5,000 check. Also there is going to be regular prices and you're going to be seeing Hector Guerrero, Jeff Jarrett engaged in a lumberjack strap match. Now Jeff you know this. This is where all the guys are around the ring. They've got those big straps and anybody that goes out. I don't mean just you, just Hector. Either one of you, wham, they'll strap you right back in. Well, I heard Hector out here a little while ago running his mouth, saying that he asked for this match. Well, the truth of the matter is, and Hector, you know it, I asked for this match because uh, last week I guess I did get a little taste of a leather strap. Well, this week I get to get you in the ring. And you've been saying that I run from you every match and I try to hide under the ring or run back to the dressing room and get my friends. Well, that isn't the truth, Lance. This week in Evansville, Hector, I get to have you in the middle of that ring. And just, if you just try to run out of that ring, I got four or five guys outside the ring with big leather straps and they're going to tan your hide. And brother, you're going to want to get back in the ring with me. And I'm going to beat your brains a little bit more. And then you're going to run out and it's going to go back and forth till he can't take no more. And I'm going to do my best to pin his shoulders to the mat. One, two, three. Now, I gotta, I'll tell you one thing. That's what the making of a doggone good match is. And that'll be just one of the seven matches that'll be taking place right there in the Evansville Coliseum on Wednesday night. Good idea. Idea. Get a group together. Come on out, have some fun, and see the act. Hey, nobody said anything about two on one, Hector. I, what are we talking about? I, is Jeff Jarrett is over in the corner. Billy Travis against Hector Guerrero. Hector and Billy uh, out here earlier, and they agreed to the match. Billy Travis out of Lexington, Kentucky. Hector Guerrero from Mexico City. Not a loser leave town, though. Hector said we were just asking him, would he leave, uh, you know, if he loses? He said, well, I'm going to make beat him up so bad he won't ever show his face around here. And that's when I asked him if he was going to leave. He said he couldn't beat me and all that kind of stuff. So it's not a loser leave town, but Travis and Guerrero ought to be a dandy in whatever time we have left. Jeff Jarrett is in Billy Travis's corner. You can see him there at ringside. Yeah, Hector says, hey, I got him. He jabbed him with his thumb. We've only got about a minute to go as we got into this match late, and uh, so our time is running out. Billy takes Hector straight down, pitches him forward, wraps the arm up as Hector grabbed a handful of hair. Jeff Jarrett telling the referee, pull the hair, and that's the way he got him off and down on the mat. Jeff keeping his eye. He hasn't interfered in the match, Davey. He's just been over there at the side keeping the referee, giving the referee another set of eyes. That's right. What you need against Hector Guerrero, at least one set, one other set, that is. Billy with Hector down on the mat, left arm barred, not a pin position. Hector, oh, yeah. he scissored him with those uh, with those legs. Good power there as he got him off his feet, and now it's Billy with the shoulders down for a two count. Great call for one. An illegal move. 
Oh, he was on his throat. He was choking him. That's what it was. Hey, I... Our time is up, Time's Jerry. Up. I'm sorry. We're all out of time. What we're going to have to do is take a break here, and we'll be back in just a moment. Wrestling by Ellie will have more wrestling next week. I tell you, I am excited about the Renegade Rampage 88 that uh, is coming up. We'll have more information.